A couple weeks ago, I made a teriyaki tofu video and you guys seem to really enjoy the recipe. So we are making an even more decadent and rich version of teriyaki tofu that is tofu nanban. The idea originally came from a popular Japanese dish called chicken nanban. It's a sweet and sour chicken teriyaki together with a creamy egg sauce. Instead of using chicken, this time we are opting for tofu. We are also making soup and side dishes to go with it. The recipe can be easily veganized, so I hope all of you have something to take away. Today is the last day for entering a giveaway to celebrate our first e-cookbook. I talk more about that at the end. For now, let's get cooking. On the night before our filming, I did a little prep to bring out the meaty texture to the tofu. Cut firm tofu into big bite-sized pieces. Mine is about 1 inch square and a half inch thick. We're gonna squeeze the tofu later, so make sure not to cut it too small. Place them into the container, keep it in the freezer until it's completely frozen. In Japan, we don't have extra firm tofu, so it contains a substantial amount of liquid. By freezing it, we can remove all the liquid by squeezing them after it's thawed out. Use extra firm tofu if it's available where you live. On the next day, it comes out like this. It becomes so much like a spongy. Squeeze the liquid with the equal pleasure. It's still very breakable, so be careful. This is so satisfying. Line up on the clean cloth and gently wipe off the excess moisture, seasoned with a pinch of salt and black pepper. We're gonna come back later. Next, we're gonna make Japanese clear soup, which is also in my e-cookbook. Wash the sweet potato and cut into big bite-sized pieces. I'm opting for Japanese sweet potatoes. I keep the skin on for the extra fiber, but it's up to you. Soak them into the water to remove the starch. Peel the skin of the carrot and cut into small bite-sized pieces. This soup is very forgiving so you can put pretty much any vegetable you want like leeks or spring onion, kabocha squash or tofu. Cut thin parts into coins and thick parts into half moons. The shimeji mushroom. You can use any type of mushroom you want. Cut off the base and tear them by hand. Lastly, peel the skin of onion. Chop into the same size as the carrot. Drain the water of the sweet potato. Pour the water into the pot. Then add all the vegetables at once. You guys noticed that I chopped sweet potatoes a little bigger than others so that sweet potato will still hold the shape by the time other ingredients are fully cooked. Place a dashi packet which includes bonito flakes and kombu in it. You can also use fish stock powder or comb dashi powder or any other soup stock you have on hand. Start heating up over high heat until it just starts to boil. Lower the heat to medium and cook it for another 4 to 5 minutes with the lid on. After 4 minutes, let the dashi packet steep, then discard it. Pop the lid and simmer for another 10 minutes or until all the ingredients are cooked through. When the sweet potatoes are nice and golden, time to season the soup. It's very simple. We have salt, any type of sea salt is okay, mirin for the sweetness, light soy sauce. As you can see, the color is a lot lighter than the regular soy sauce, but the sodium content is higher. We don't want to ruin the color of the soup, so the light soy sauce acts perfectly in this case. Please have a taste before you serve. Add dried wakame seaweed to boost even more flavor. It will expand to double when it's hydrated, so try not to add too much then of the heat. For the simple side dish, we are going to make pickled plum turnip salad. Remove the seeds from the pickled plum and mash it until you reach pureed consistency. Pickled plum is intensely salty and tangy. If this is your first time trying, start by small amount and add additional as you go. Add two tablespoons of mirin. Just a heads up, mirin contains alcohol. If you are concerned about the alcohol, you can just cook off the alcohol for 15 seconds in the pot. Even if you skip the process, you don't taste the alcohol at all. Then add 1 teaspoon of soy sauce and 1 tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. Mix them again as you keep mashing the pickle plum. 
It will enhance small flavor. Then let's slice the turnip and roughly chop the leaf part. Combine with the dressing just before serving, otherwise the turnip will lose its crispiness and the dressing might get watered down a little bit. Now we are going to make egg sauce for the teriyaki tofu. Bring the water to a boil and reduce the heat to low when you place the egg so that it will prevent the egg from having clacks by jumping around in the water. Cook eggs for 9 minutes. In the meantime, mince onion. If you are sensitive to the pungency of onions, soak them in water for a couple of minutes, drain and squeeze them in the clean kitchen cloth. The step is totally optional, but I find it's a nice extra care for kids. Go. After 9 minutes, transfer the egg into the ice bath for a couple of minutes. This will help to peel the skin, not the skin, it's a shell, easily. Mash the egg by using the back of the knife. It's a great activity to get your kids involved into the cooking. It was a lot of fun. To the egg, add a half teaspoon of sugar, yogurt. I'm opting for soy here, but any kinds works just fine. Followed by Japanese mayo and minced onion. Mix to combine. If you are plant-based, just omit the egg entirely and swap for a vegan mayo, then add any chopped fresh herbs you want. I personally love the Japanese shiso leaves and chives. Do you guys know about tsuzuki sauce? I think I pronounce it okay. I found it on the internet and it sounds promising for this teriyaki tofu. If you guys ever try that, let me know in the comment section. Next to the plate or shallow bowl, we're gonna add in about one cup of potato starch. You can also use cornstarch or any other starch you have on hand. Coat the tofu in some potato starch, just slightly coating it on all sides, shaking off the extra if it's needed. Then go straight into the oil to shallow fry them. You can use any high heat oil. Here I'm using two tablespoons of rice brown oil. Cook it over mid heat until the bottom side is slightly brown. At this stage, try not to disturb the tofu. Just let it sit for at least three minutes before you give it a flip. Otherwise, the tofu and potato starch will crumble apart. Let's be resourceful on time. For the teriyaki sauce, we're just gonna combine sugar, soy sauce, rice vinegar, and water all together. Make sure the sugar is fully dissolved. Coming back to tofu, you will see the bottom side is nice and firm. Give it a flip and do another side. When all sides are nice and golden and crispy, off the heat and wipe off the excess oil. You could remove the tofu at this stage to retain the crispiness. Make sure to remove all the excess oil before you add the sauce. We don't want the sauce to be too greasy. Pour the sauce and cook it over mid heat until the sauce is thickened to your liking. It's burnt easily, so make sure to get your pan moving. Let the tofu coat it with this delicious sticky sauce. Alternatively, if you decide to remove the tofu from the pan, you can thicken the sauce first and back your crispy tofu in at the end, then coat it with the sticky sauce. In a way, you can retain the texture. Make a bed of leafy greens and pile up your sticky sweet and sour tofu. Make sure to drop your egg sauce on the side and ready to be enjoyed. This is hands down my kids' favorite. I like tofu, whereas my kids are not big fan of. It's sometimes hard to enjoy the same thing, but this is something my entire family loves. Because this teriyaki tofu is rich and doesn't carry many vegetables, 
The simple classic Japanese clear soup complements each other perfectly, especially with the refreshing tangy turnip salad and rice. To me, this is a perfect meal combo I want to come back to over and over again. I don't know about you, but the hardest part of cooking every day is planning. I have no idea how many times I thought I wished I had someone to give me the meal plan every day. If you can resonate to this, I think my e cookbook might help to decrease your decision fatigue. Each recipe will come with a recommended side dish, which links to my website where there are over 250 recipes by far. Once you chose one recipe you make from the book, you will automatically sign up for other dishes to make your table even more enjoyable. We have a vegan cookbook, Japanese breakfast cookbook, and meal prep cookbook. So pick whichever calls for your name. I just want to say thank you so so much for your kind support and help.、Um, before I start this project, I was thinking to get it done in three months, but it's ended up taking me about six months. And、uh, every time I a b o u t to give up, I went to the YouTube comment section and saw your comments. And that's the only way I can push myself going towards the end. So I feel like this book is not my book, it's, it's our book. I cannot appreciate it enough for this. And I made a short clip about my cookbook, so I guess it'd be nice to end by watching that video. So thanks again and see you. Mata ne!